Good evening, viewers. My name is Jonathan Robbins, and we're here this evening to play In It For A Minute, the UK's literary-based quiz show. In It For A Minute. Let's meet our contestants. Michael, where are you from? Today's champion, Douglas. Get In It For A Minute. With me, Jonathan Robbins. Me, Jonathan Robbins. Me, Jonathan Robbins. In Hemingway's The Old Man of the Sea. Join us once more, and goodbye, goodbye. Today, everybody, I'm witnessing yet another episode of In It For A Minute. Goodbye, everyone. Great show as usual, Mr. Robbins. Mm. Kind of on autopilot at this point. Ah, Jonathan, congratulations. Come oh, on, you never wanted out. Nice work, Jonathan. Come to fire me. <laughs> the view is better on the 20th floor. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about trying to convince Nicky here that you spend the time in the office. OK, that's much better, thank, thank you. you. Oh, how's that young gal you brought to Stanley's party a couple of weeks ago? She looked very bright. Hmm. Big university plans, I imagine. <laughs> very, very funny, Jonathan. Very funny. Well, if she's still around next spring and you want to impress her, why don't you trot her down to my box at Lord's? Mm, I think I'd prefer my own box at Stamford Bridge, thank you very much. Well, remind me, is it still Russian money making you a decent side, or have you sold your soul to the shakes like City? <laughs> you know, I would take your comment seriously if I thought you cared at all about football. I can't be blamed for preferring a gentleman's game. Yes, it is. It's cricket. It's as, almost as antiquated as you are, Jonathan. Oh, very clever. All mm. right, listen. I've uh, just been off with your bloody lawyers. I'll give this for them. At least they're polite while I'm being shafted. It's a closed deal. Congratulations on another season. Very good. That makes it what? It's your 40th Dawn, season. I'd love to do that. Years, tomorrow, my God, I'm I must busy. have paid half Andrew, I need that call now. sheet. <laughs> yes, mm. I dare say you're right. And, uh, well, don't think we're not grateful. We are. What is the gift for that sort of milestone? I imagine you'll be getting me something very expensive. 40th anniversary is a ruby. Ruby. Thank you, Sonny. Yes, i will have my assistant get you a box of chocolates, I think. Well, from the heart, right, from the heart. Oh, uh, Nikki, could you uh, email a copy over to my assistant, Patrick? Uh, too long in the trenches. There's a smell of bitter breakfast tea and stale cigarette smoke down here. Again. Again soon. Bye -bye. Forty years. Incredible, Jonathan. You must still have been in nappies when I curse it into my twenties. <laughs> but we can't slow down now. It'd be an absolute travesty to lose out to the bloody Americans. You know, we invented the game show. Is that so? Yeah. Huh. Spelling bee. It's absolutely ghastly. It's only fifteen minutes long. It's first transmitted live from the uh, the BBC studios at Ali Pali. 31st of May, 1938. Oh, let's get you changed. Schedule and tomorrow's call sheet. Make sure you sort out a time for me to get together with uh, with Henry O'Connor, old friend of mine. He's been calling and calling. Uh, I think your schedule frees up at the end of next month. Really? Until then? Oh, okay. I don't suppose you want to share a bottle of wine with me. Hmm? It's a seventy-six mile goal. That sounds amazing, but I've got to get home to Sasha. The twins can really be a nightmare this time of night. You're a good man, Benjamin. 
oh, there's a box of fan mail on the dining table. I've gone through it and thrown out the junk. Why do you want to keep writing to me? Well, you keep having fans and thus keep getting fan mail. I can't believe it myself. If only they knew how much of a curmudgeon you really are. I didn't hire you, dear Sins of Jima. Get out of here. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Good night. And we'll see you again the next time we play In It for a Minute. Thank you. Bye now. Bye, everyone. My God, the ghost returns. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Good to see you, stranger. It's been too long. I know, I know. Busier than ever. <laughs> Good on you. So, what are you weapon? Oh, uh, that's a bone. I kept a bottle on the back shelf just for you. Good man. Boys are over there. I'll bring the glass round. Cheers. Gentlemen. Hello, Johnny. I can't stay long. I have to get back to town. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, the life of a big celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Henry? I'm shagging the cleaner again, is he? Henry died. Oh, bollocks. It was the worst of comedy, Michael. It's true, Johnny. <sighs> Cancer. Yeah, no problem. It all happened very quickly. I know he tried to contact you several times. He wanted to tell you himself. When's the funeral? It was last week. This is what we kept calling you about. He never returned the calls. You should have left a message. Just told me. Well. <laughs> Well, you've known the guy for 50 years. I mean, it didn't seem quite the proper thing to leave a message about. Here you go. <sighs> you heard the news about Henry, then? Shite. Everyone's got a time, I suppose. Anyway, you have to be somewhere far more important. We just wanted to give you the news. We'll leave you to it. David, I'm sorry. You know that. Yeah, well, let's not pretend. You've been a non-friend for years. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Friends don't meet each other once a year out of charity. There have been times when there was no one else for you. Do you remember those times? We were there. We were family. Henry. Henry was family. You should visit Henry's grave. All Saints Churchyard. Pay me respects. 
God knows you don't show any respects for any of us anymore. David. Michael. Shall I uh, pump that bottle? No. Or? Bring it over. <sighs> I'll drink it. It's pretty here. Yeah. I'm rather uh, I missed your funeral. Oh. Sounds worse when you say it out loud. Mr. Robbins? Mr. Robbins? On in five, sir. Please join us next time we play In It For A Minute. His friend died. Yeah. I didn't expect you to hit me this hard. No one wants to die. It's not the sort of thing that people look forward to. I'm getting a little terrible, Frank. No, Henry did tell me that last year he missed his birthday drinks because you were shagging some twice divorcee you just met. Bloody hell. Sounds worse when you see her out loud. I suppose that when one finds oneself confronting mortality, that you uh, begin to question things. It was a summary of my life. It was a life well lived. But the legacy of what I leave behind. Do you think you wasted your life? what most people feel in here. They talk to me, you know. A holy union of the bartender and his patron. A bond of immeasurable confidentiality. Something like that, yeah. Well, confidential then. Yes. I find myself beginning to question things that I haven't questioned before. Johnny, you've lived a great life. You're rich, you're famous. What else is there? Game show host. You bring joy to many people. A certain kind of joy that without you, there would be one less game show. Yeah. Isn't that what I did? 
intended to do. It was never the plan. I just fell into it all those years ago. Went to drama school, you know. Well, we all did. David, Michael. <sighs> Dreams of playing in the theatre, going on tour, Shakespeare. Well, I'll tell you the same thing my dad told me. If you're not happy, you better fake it. Because miserable sods get old real quick. I'm not sure how inspirational that is. The man lived and died behind this bar. What do you expect? I am your biggest fan. You do not understand what you mean to me, even at my age. You are an inspiration to me. I'm sure you must be the busiest man ever, but if you end up in Washington, please come visit me. It would be world to me. Jonathan, pick up the phone, Jonathan, pick up. Has anyone seen Mr. Robbins? Natasha, have you seen Mr. Robbins? Guys, have you seen Mr. Robbins? Sonny, Sonny, please tell me you've seen Mr. Robbins. Anyone? Um, where? Hello, Spencer. Jonathan, the whole town's looking for you. You're due at the studio for a live show in an hour. I'm wondering if I'm not as fulfilled as I thought I was. Fulfilled? What do you mean? Well, I mean, do you ever think that you've been coasting along, believing that life is perfect, and yet your memories tell you otherwise? That perhaps you've, uh, that you've missed something? Johnny, darling. When my father gave me this company, he did not say your clients will need to feel fulfilled. He said your clients will need to make piles of money. You've just signed a massive contract. A 40th year. It's the easiest job in the world. Walk on stage, smile, tell a few cheesy jokes. Easy money. I have this letter from a child. She says I inspire her. Well, that's great. We'd all like to inspire future generations. Sam caused me to think about things in a way that I haven't before. I, I don't like the sound of that. Spencer. You are my agent. I make you more money than you deserve. So just listen for a moment, OK? to know what I've done in my life, that she felt compelled to write this. Hmm? Well, it would ease my conscience to know that I've shaped a child in a way that they might go on to great things. Jonathan. Mr. Robbins, you need to wrap your call. We're about to take off. Sure. If you could pop your seatbelt on, please. Right. Are you on a plane? Uh, well, figure it out, Spencer. Johnny. Johnny, darling. Jonathan! Hello there. 
No. Yes, sorry, just finishing up on Harold here. <laughs> anyway, how can I help? Finally, uh, checking in, Joseph Ray. You've got an interesting voice. Are you from Canada? Certainly not. Wait a minute. Are you famous? Don't tell anyone. Hell, you're on Downtown Abbey, aren't you? Um, no, uh, no, I'm afraid not. Oh, I could swear it. I love that show. Well, it's a wonderful show. It is. Now about checking in, Joseph Ray. Right, I've got you right here, Joseph Ray, and you've got the one king bed in the whole place. And let's see, says here you're with us. Oh, well that's strange. It says you forgot to put a checkout date. Well, not forgot, um, just unsure. I'm sorry. I keep getting distracted by your voice. I feel like I'm sitting here having tea with the Queen <laughs> of England. A week. Let's say a week. I'll have to charge you a week in advance. That's fine. Cash. That's fine. It's a 35 a night, seven, 35 into seven. 35 times 270 has got 140. Uh, let's see, that's four, one, 40. Um, $250, that should cover it. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's call it that. Great. Okay, Mr. Ray, just need to see some ID. Oh, yes, of course. Um, just a second. Yep. Here we are. Great. <clears throat> Well now, so so this says Jonathan Paul Robbins, and, and that is not the the name I have here on the reservation. Well, I, I often uh, use a pseudonym for privacy purposes. It's a name one uses to be less conspicuous in public places. Oh, because you're on Downtown Abbey. Okay, well, it's just that I can't actually check you in under this reservation if the name doesn't match the one on the ID, and that's a company policy. It's okay, okay, let, well, let's forget the reservation under Ray and put the reservation in my name. <sighs> I could fall asleep listening to your voice. <laughs> do you do books on tape? <laughs> I would love uh, to listen to your voice just reading us. So let's just go ahead and, uh, and change the reservation. Great, I'll have to charge you cancellation fee. It's less than 24 hours in advance. It's a company policy, sir. Whatever you need to do to get me into a room in five minutes, I would be very grateful. Okay, let's get you into room number, let's see, room number three. So mm -hmm. this, here's your room key, and the room number is right on there. Right. And it will be a queen size bed. The king was reserved for Joseph Ray. Thank you very much. Great, and uh, is there anything else I can help you with? Oh, uh, yes, uh, directions to the nearest pub. <laughs> pub, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Cheerio. Yes, the bar is, it's about a 10 minute walk. that taxing just a drink yeah well what are you drinking I don't suppose you have a bone what the hell did you just say is there a problem here I don't know yet we got a problem I haven't come for an argument just a drink well you're gonna order a drink or keep yapping like you're the king of England to the point I like that um, would you have any red wine in your establishment? Anything. Even the Californian would do. Cheeky little Pinot from Paso Robles. We got it in a box in the fridge, but I don't know where it comes from. You want me to check? Gin and tonic it is. <clears throat> hey. 
You still piss we won the war? If you're referring to World War II, far from it. We happen to be very grateful for our allies. I'm talking about the revolution. Billy, shut your mouth and stop antagonizing my new customer. He antagonized you first. Just shut up and drink your beer. Thank you for that. You're a long way from home. Your car break down outside or something? That would certainly be the universal apropos. You know, you've been in here for like three minutes and you've already shown you got a great talent for making people seem stupider than you. I believe something is lost in translation. Let's start again. My name is Jonathan. And you are my bartender, and as such, you uh, occupy a very sacred position in the scheme of things. Pleased to meet you. Ruby. Ruby. Your name is Ruby. That bother you too? Mm, it's just ironic, that's all. Somebody's anniversary and all that. <clears throat> it's not important. Um, so, uh, Ruby, have you lived in this town long? All my life. And do you like it? Have you spent more than five minutes here? Unless you know it's a negative, huh? It's home, that's all. Well, it's, um, it's not strange to have a complicated dynamic about the place you've grown up in. This happens all the time. You're probably staying up at one of those big lake mansions up around the bend. The tourists, the rich assholes who fly in for a week a year. But see, you took a right and came down the bend, when you should have taken a left and you would have ended up with all the other cute little tourists, taking selfies, drinking IPAs, instead of the bar with the locals actually live in this shithole year round. Well, it just so happens that I'm staying at the motel up the road. <laughs> you better fire your travel agent. <clears throat> Ruby, where are those shots? Coming. I was just making sure you weren't already puking your guts out all over my floor. Charming. I can't believe you're there. You do realize I'm Googling this place right now. They have a lot of problems. Like what? Like ticks. Uh, bloodthirsty ticks. I expected you to say Republicans with guns. So the point is, there's no reason for you to be there right now. The worst thing I've found are a couple of Davy Crockett's oh, and some dead animals on the walls. Oh my God. You've walked into a horror movie. That's what this is, isn't it? I'm going to get a call saying that you've been decapitated by some backwoodsman redneck type. Well, you'll be pleased to hear I've rented myself a house in a more respectable part of town. Benjamin found it for me. Looks a nice place. A house? So you're staying? Yes. I'm going on a sabbatical. You're becoming a priest now? I believe the term you're thinking of is seminary. Priest or no priest? Just get back here. The network is not going to like this. I've been making the money for 40 years. You know, it's the least they can do. Um, I have to go, OK? Uh, Jonathan, <laughs> don't make me send somebody to America to bring you back. Spencer, you're breaking up. <laughs> bring me the bottle! Spectacular, truly. Architecture, love the court and steel. Truly is spectacular. Thank God. I have the contract right here. You can just sign well, on the I'm, dotted uh, line. I'm sure All my normal. Assistant, Benjamin, no, no, he can, no uh, troubles. No troubles. Just sign right here. Yes. Right, right there. There. That's that White Walker. Hey, y'all, head to the crib. I got this, all right? <laughs> Yo, man, I love the shoes. You're wearing them. Yeah, I think they look good. 
I thought you were on tour. We were. Yeah, we totally were. But uh, Reginald, he found out that his cat got eaten by a coyote. Oh. Uh, is this the new renter? Yes, I suppose. Why? Yo, man, you sound like James Bond, dude. That's badass. Oh, thank you. I think. I'm uh, Dennis Wade. Most people know me as a tiny hammer, though. You might have heard of it. Tiny hamster. Tiny hammer, yo. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess we need a landlord. Oh. Here. Housewarming gift. Recorded that last week. It's hot, yo. Be careful. Tiny hammer does America. <laughs> Inspiring. <laughs> yo, that's what I'm talking about, dude. Pinky Blinders. Oh, man, I love that show. Have you seen that show? I have not. <sighs> You gotta check it out, man. Irish gangsters. It's not a bad accent, what do you think? Anyway, Amanda, I'll take it from here. No refunds, no exchanges. Here's the key. Good luck. He gonna be just fine. I'm gonna take care of him. Come on, baby. All right, home sweet home. Okay, my man. Mi casa and su casa. Head over here. Now. I have two bedrooms for myself because sometimes I really don't know which one to sleep in, you know? Hey, problem with money, right? <laughs> Come on. Masterpieces featuring yours truly, timeless works of art. That was the fire, the angel. Got a little sauna room, music studio. You got the panic room, because you never know, the world's getting crazy, right? And uh, you're gonna be up there. Cool. Is this your parents' house? Oh, no, nah, man. This is my pad. I live here. Well. In the winters, I like to head down to the islands. You know, I can't stay in the snow. Very nice house for a young man of your uh, age. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <clears throat> anyway, here's the kitchen. Feel free to have anything in the fridge. It's yours. Yo. Yeah, you like that, don't you, bro? Yeah, that's my view. <sighs> oh, yo, Svetlana. Yo, baby, get over here. This is my wife. From Russia. This is our new renter. <gasps> oh, Klasna. I put out that ad yesterday. Well, but here's the man, our new friend. Well, more of an acquaintance at this juncture. You know, for the longest time, I kept calling her Eastern European. But then she tells me, Russia is in Asia. I mean, doesn't that blow in your mind? Dude, she's Asian. <laughs> well. Anyway, Svetlana, uh, this is Wait, what did you say your name was? Jonathan Robbins. Priyatna Pazna Komitsa. It is nice to meet you. Svetlana. Svetlana. What are you doing? I say hello. Yeah, he's a guest in her house, not the pony at the county fair. You are no fun, Dennis. Jonathan. A drink. Dear God, yes. <laughs> I was bartender in Russia. We'll make you something special. <clears throat> What's up? I know, I'm sorry. I just, the whole thing with this cat and stuff. I'm gonna bring my tiny hammer. Seems like uh, a lot. Nah. I mean, you usually only get about six months of runtime before they disappear on you with their green card. But you know, Svetlana's different. Yeah, I think I'm in love with her. Yeah, she's super into fitness, man. So she's running all the time. She's making sure I stay in shape and stuff. Did you know that she was a gold medal winner in Asia for track and field? Russia. Kind of I thought she said she was a bartender. Oh, my man. She had a lot of things. Uh, just so you know, we keep it super quiet around here, so just pretend we're not even here. But if you need anything, you just knock on our bedroom door. Capiche? I probably will. All right. Oh. Hey, uh, I know we just met, but, uh, me and the boys about to smoke a giant blunt and float in the pool like a couple turtles. I mean, if you want to join us. <sighs> Thank you. You sure? Mm. All right, my man.
You're stalking me now? I'm sorry. Um, you live here? Yeah. You, uh, you just didn't strike me as a mother. I apologize. Mm. Those were not choice words. Um, nothing has gone right today. Interesting. <laughs> so what can I help you with? Oh, um, well, I, uh, uh, I have this letter and uh, well, I've come to meet the little girl who wrote it. <laughs> little girl? Uh, let me see it. Oh, son of a bitch. Ruby, who's that just yapping away at the door? It's for you. It's really you? Um, well, clearly there's been some mistake. It is, it's really you. Mr. Robbins here at my door. This is crazy. Ruby, you had anything to do with this? Absolutely not. Mr. Robbins, I am your biggest fan. Your biggest fan. The letter. Well, uh, well, it appeared to be the handwriting of a child. Yeah, since the last stroke, it hasn't been so good. Hands are a little bit shaky, you know. I certainly do now. Well, I'm, uh, I'm delighted uh, you've had exposure in a place like this. Well, don't stand out there on the porch. Get in here. Ruby, get this man a drink or a coffee or whatever he needs. You Brits love whiskey, right? Well, well a drink sounds like the most responsible thing right now. Yes, yes. Birthday party. Okay, there it is. Very good. Good. Mm. Neat. Cheers. <clears throat> it's wild turkey. Mr. Robbins, you'll stay for some hors d'oeuvres? Of course. And please, uh, call me Jonathan. Oh, okay. Here you go. Well, this looks extraordinarily unique. Go ahead. Don't be shy. Take, take a bite. There you go. Ruby, you want one? I'm good, Graham. <sighs> Jonathan, I still can't believe you're here in my house. Out of all the fan letters you get, you answered mine. You must get, what, like a thousand a day? You'd be amazed at what arrives in the post. <laughs> the post, I love it. Ruby, the post, not the mail. Got it, Graham. Uh, so how long are you in town for? Uh, well, uh, the truth is, I was um, I was just heading straight through, and uh, well, I, I have a previous engagement, sort of a publicity tour thing happening here in America, and uh, well, uh, you happen to be on the way, so uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to to drop in in such on such a wonderful fan as yourself. Isn't it a shame? It would have been wonderful to have you for dinner. Mm. Such a shame, yes. Uh, oh. Alice, uh, it's been a pleasure. Oh. Oh. Ruby? Bless you for coming here. Can we get a picture? Of course. Ruby, get a picture. Come on, take a picture. Okay. On the coffee okay. table. Uh, wait, hurry. Hurry. Smile. Hello. 
maybe get a little closer. Closer. A little closer. You know, I might just kiss her on the cheek. That, that's nice. That'd be nice. Nice. Okay, great. I think I got it. <laughs> oh, well then. Goodbye. I'll walk you out. <laughs> goodbye. You really just came by to say hello to my grandma? Indeed. Huh. Well, yes, it's often the little things to my fans that mean the most. Do take care of your grandmother. to hear my rain, rain, rap away, man. That's straight from the heart. Masvelana, love, you feel that? <laughs> baby, this just the beginning, baby. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you heard, Richie? Skirt, 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 skirt! <laughs> You're James Bond, yeah! <laughs> hey, 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 everybody, Shh, turn the music down, turn the music down. Yo, this is my new friend, James Bond! Oh, yeah! Jonathan. Hello. Hey, let's get you something to drink. Hey, Reggie. Hey, get a drink for my friend, all right? He's a guest in our home. Not for me. Oh, never mind. We good. Yo, man, you okay? I think I'm a bit shocked by your house. The fact that you can afford something so beautiful, and then you, uh, you fill it up with this crowd. Oh, thanks, man. Yo, I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, the, the band has just been blowing up lately. So you really make money. Oh, tons. It's crazy. You know, people just seem to love what we do. We invented a new genre. It's rap and big band. Yo, you get it? We call it big rap. You get that? Big band rap. You have to make sure your typist doesn't make any mistakes. James Bond. Oh, baby. <laughs> Are you hungry? Oh. I made. Ot ulicni blini with masla, snetana, ikra. I was very famous chef in Russia. <laughs> Settle down, tiger. You know what? We should play something for you. We don't have to. Hey, Richie! Richie! No, oh, Richie! Hey, yo! Get our gear, man. We're gonna play something for James Bond. Okay. Lately, I'm a big fan of the bassoon. Have you ever heard the bassoon? But probably not in this context. I gotta tell you something, you're easily the oldest dude to ever hang here. Thank you, I think. Speaking of, why are you putting out adverts for renters? Money doesn't seem to be a problem. Ah, Svetlana loves that. No, that's totally her job. You know, she was a psychiatrist in Russia, so she loves people. Yo, Dennis! What's up, Frank? Dude, you seen my shirt? I can't find my shirt. You mean the one with the tigers on it? The one you got in Bali, right? Yeah, man. Frank, you're wearing it, baby! Oh, crazy. Thanks, Dennis. No problem, brother. Hey, can you help Richie get the rest of our gear, man? We're gonna play James something here. Jonathan. Right, sorry. Look, I, uh... A flight tomorrow. I should probably pack. No, 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 hey, 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 hey. Look, look, you seem like a stressed dude. I got an idea. All right. You know how to hold a camera, right? Uh -huh. All me, yeah? Yep. All right. Tiny Hammer in the house! Hey, are you really that? 
James Bond guy? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, do you want one of these? Chocolate? Yeah. Thank you. Mm, you're very good. You make it. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks. They're full of ecstasy. Oh! Don't worry, I was stuck there in the Russia. Oh man, he pulls through. Hey, buddy. You're a sicko, man, and you tried to kill yourself last night. I did not. Well, it's a good thing you didn't. Mm. How do you feel? Fine. No, 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 take it easy. Uh, oh. You took enough pills to kill a small horse. I, you didn't, I just, uh, I just always wanted to say something like that. I'm sorry that Angelina laced her brownie. I mean, she's good at that. It's kind of her thing. I mean, you did almost drown, too, so maybe. What time is it? Oh, um, Thursday, I think. Thursday. Oh, God, I missed my flight. Oh. Is my phone? Oh, um, yeah, I hope you don't mind, um, I was looking to see if I should call your wife or something to let her know you were dead, but I couldn't find any pet names, you know, like Bay or whatever. And also, you need a better passcode than all zeros. I mean, seriously, bro, I was like, like that, bro. I'm divorced. I'm afraid she'd be very glad to hear of it. Oh, that's harsh, brother. Mm. Super harsh. How about you, Svetlana? Would you be sad if I died? It depends how, I guess. If it was... Cruel car accident. Wait, wait, a, a clown car accident? A cruel car accident. No, 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 a clown car accident. Why, why are there clowns in a mix? This is a nightmare. Uh, my phone, oh, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, also, were you famous or something? I mean, Angelina swore she recognized you from some Downtown Abbey A show. I love Downtown Abbey. <sighs> I'm sure you two have both been very helpful, but... If you could both just give me a moment to recover. Oh, oh, you want us to... Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Take your time. See, and on the back, yo. 
My dog in the back. What? Got the things with the braps. Uh, Hi there. I keep... Just letting you know that I will be officially checking out. Uh, yeah. Yo, I'm sorry about the party, man. I, I didn't mean to screw your vacation up. Well, the truth is, I came here looking for something very stupid and uh, didn't work out at all. Well, what was it? Well, uh, a friend of mine passed away recently. I missed his funeral. And it has caused me to reflect on many things in my life. Hmm. That sucks, bro. Well, I came here looking for some answers, some perspective. Didn't work out. Well, you miss your friend's funeral. I mean, you worried people will miss yours? Actually, in a way, yes. At my age, you think about these things. Legacy. Mm. What people might say about you after you've gone. Sure, man, that's straight Ebenezer. Ebenezer? Yeah, man. Ebenezer Scrooge. He straight up saw a vision that no one came for his funeral. I mean, he was... Rich, successful, no one cared. People just came for the food. Well, well I didn't expect such an apt analogy as that. Yeah, man. Yo, I wrote a song about this. Check it. Mm. Ebenezer Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge. This cat really was Scrooge. Pigs came for nothing but picking out at the funeral, the spider. The spider, the spider, and the rat took his curtains and all that. Oh. Rats, pigs, spiders, that's actually a very accurate analogy for the dregs of society that uh, the novel was referring to. The novel? Wait, are you telling me you've never seen Muppet Christmas Carol before? Ebenezer Scrooge, the butler from Batman? You know, Riz Little Rat. Kermit the Frog, you know, the snakes and spiders, man. <laughs> Dickens would have been very proud. Yeah, the dude from Batman wouldn't even give those rats coal for the fire. And that, that tears me up inside just thinking about it now. You know what Ebenezer Scrooge did. He found out that making other people happy is better than being happy all alone. someone I might not ordinarily have the chance to. <laughs> oh, you mean me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, worry, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do know the Muppets didn't write A Christmas Carol, don't you, Dennis? Wait, no shit? No shit. <laughs> uh, learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a ton more beers in that cooler there if you want one. Sure. Yeah, but, I mean, it felt so real. You know what I mean? Like, you can't deny the relationship between the guy playing Big Dickens and Riz It a Rat. Everything about this is truly fascinating. My man. Facts. You could have just said something, just write me back. Let me know you get my communication, please. You say you're sorry, and then you add all this other crap that doesn't even matter. I mean, why even apologize? I didn't mean to do that shit, okay? I'm sorry. But you should not be looking at him the way you but looked at him, okay? I wasn't even recognizing that I was sitting alone. I told you a thousand times, do not look at him that way. You gotta respect me. <clears throat> 
I do everything for you. Why do you do this to me? Hey, what the hell do you want? Apologies. I, uh, uh, I was just taking a drink inside and the lovely woman behind the bar asked me if I would remind Ruby that her break is over. <clears throat> well, her hands were rather tied with a group of very enthusiastic gentlemen who were on their sixth, seventh round of tequila, so uh, no need to shoot the messenger. <clears throat> we'll finish this later. engagements to get to. Cancel. <clears throat> it's none of my business, but... Uh... It ain't. It ain't. <sighs> Thanks anyway. So, how long are you staying? Well, I thought I might give it a few more days. Take the rest of the area in. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? <laughs> oh. Sure. Uh, Ruby, uh, I don't suppose the invitation to dinner with your grandmother is um, still on the table. Okay, if I don't do it now, I'll never get another chance. Will you dance with me, Mr. Robbins? I would be delighted, Alice. <laughs> Out here every night just to take it all in. Well, it really is quite beautiful. Chilly though. Mm. Mm. You know, most people don't slow down enough to even know there are stars up in the sky. I haven't slowed down in years. I'm starting to think I've missed more than just the stars. I keep thinking all oh, those small things. They add up to a lot. Perhaps a whole lifetime. You got kids? A son. Our relationship is infrequent. He hasn't called me in ages, which is a good indication that I failed miserably at being a father. I haven't spoken to my daughter in 25 years. She dropped Ruby off and headed out of town with a loser boyfriend. Never came back. Not even so much as a letter. 25 years. I failed my daughter. I know that. That's why I'm trying better with Ruby. I pray she doesn't end up like her mother, but it's hard not to in a place like this. I wish she could leave, go to school. She stays on account of me. She has a good heart, but 
she's wasting away. Alice, I lied when I said I was passing through. I did come because of your letter. Mind you, I did think it was written by a child. <laughs> The truth is, a friend of mine died, a good friend. I missed his funeral. Too damn self-important to even pick up a call or respond to a voicemail. I, I started thinking about my life in a way that really frightened me. I mean, what have I ever done to make a difference in the world, truly a difference? Did I save lives? Did I cure cancer? Did I fight for world peace? You know, most people don't get to do that stuff, right? Care for a child dropped on their doorstep. But something in your letter moved me. When you said I inspired you, I needed to know why? I mean, why do I inspire you? The truth is, Jonathan, I had people leaving me, dying on me, trying to raise a kid without much. But every day, you were there, smiling on the television. You were like family. Change one life, Jonathan. If you change just one life, then it's all worth it. You coming here, I'll never forget it. My word, I... Look, um, yeah, I should go. I'll, uh, I'll head in and say my goodbyes to Ruby. You do that. came to thank you for the evening. Are you all right? Yeah. It's just stupid. I fell out the bar trying to get to the high shelf. I see. Well then, I, uh, I will bid you good night. Thank you once more. Yo, we should find this dude, beat his ass. My bar fighting days are a little behind me. <laughs> nah, you look fit. Were you 45, 50? I'm 70. No, but still, man, nah, that's not cool, though. You know? What was I supposed to say? If people don't want help, you can't force it. Hmm. Yo, that's like some wise seven-year-old guru wisdom coming out of you. Where'd you get that? I mean, literally, if, uh, if people don't want your help, I cannot help them. Amen, brother. Preach it. The point is, there's nothing else to do. Well, at least the old lady's at the light. You think I'm chasing that tail? What were you smoking earlier? You want some? <laughs> no, thank you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> All right. I think... I have to do some theater. I think I have to, for myself. What kind of theater? Well, one man Shakespeare show. I mean, uh, McKellen did it, Pennington. Simon Keller, Roger Rees. I saw 
Gielgud live performing his Shakespeare recital, Ages of Man. And why not me? Why not once? You know? My second job at Chichester. Sir John Gielgud was in the company, and the director, uh, Robin Phillips, was kind enough to announce that the new Gielgud was also in the company. Oh. Hmm. Well, that should have been my destiny. Oh. Yeah, well, you're 70, so you might die soon. <laughs> it, it just th seems to me that you shouldn't put something like this off. That's my Google wisdom. Well, thank you for that. A fit 70? No joke. Healthy, too. <laughs> yeah, you look like you got strong bones and such, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, OG Bond. But you know, when you have a dream, you can't let everything else get in the way. You know, in India, I once watched a man use his testicles as bongo drums. Yeah, just wrapping them around and making some of the most beautiful sounds with it. Oh, that was inspiring to me, dude. Like, that's a real commitment to the... to the art. <laughs> we might have a different definition of the word. <laughs> Dog, they were like bare <coughs> testicles, man. Like, I got everything. And this, my point is, dog, is that this man had nothing but his testicles. <laughs> Yo, dog, my point is, don't give up on your dream, oh, Bond. Use it. That's inspiration. Thank you once more, Dennis. Hey, you're welcome. I admire you that you've gone out and got what you wanted in life. Thank you. Cheers. That's some good beer. You want some sauce? Yeah, hit me. We got... Spicy brown mustard, ketchup, sriracha, barbecue. Barbecue. All right, Casino Royale. No matter. Spencer, I hope this is important. Is your bank account important? At this particular moment. I've just had a call from the network. Ratings are dropping. SAP, that means as soon as possible. Spencer, I'm not coming back until I've found an answer. Spencer, I have to go. It's quite delightful. Wait. Jonathan. Shopping for somebody else. Well, I didn't mention last night that I like to try on frocks and uh, dance about a bit in heels. <laughs> frocks, huh? Not a word. Yes, it is. Big fancy frocks. Last night. Let's just not talk about it. Um, 
Anyway, I was wondering if you'd like to show me around town today. I want the real locals' horns. Or even outside of town, if there's anything I should see. What's in it for me? Well, I assume the company. All right. Buy me this frock. You got yourself a deal. Sweater. I'll get it for you. So when I first met you at the bar, you didn't seem like someone who was capable of having much fun. Thought I'd sooner get a broken jaw from you. And it comes with the territory. You know, the clientele around here is more of the ass-grabbing, whistling type, especially with a few drinks in them. Oh, well, you've got to draw the line early. <sighs> Doesn't stop them from doing it. Cultured establishment you found yourself in. You think I want to be here? You did the same. It's a job, that's all. Job? Oh, well, I understand that. Oh, hello. A bookstore. Shall we? How exciting. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. See, you're not entirely devoid of culture in this town. The Scottish play. What's it about? You haven't read it? No. Why would I? My God, youth is wasted on the young. Wuthering Heights? No. Test of the Durbervilles, Thomas Hardy. Let's just assume anything you pick out is a no. Okay, get a basket. Come on. Ah, look, there's more. Joyce. Can we get a basket? Conrad. Lewis, C.S. Lewis. Tolkien. Chesterton. Thackeray, Ruskin, Huxley. For $50, you're going to get a whole classical education. OK, nerd. But after this, I have an idea. Something really classy. I am a rugging operator. Yeah, I'm no day and I cover every acre. And no, I don't have a no, I say I'm a chaser. And I keep my light on because I'm my own generator. Tears streaming down his face. <laughs> on the best table, front and centre. No. Yeah, on the hull. <laughs> oh, you know you're not normal, right? Well, that's a backhanded compliment if ever I heard one. No, no, I just mean uh, there isn't anybody like you anymore. No, probably not. I'm a bit of a relic. Well, you got all these stories and travels and experiences. The only thing stopping people from having stories, travel, experiences. It's getting up and doing it. It's not that easy. Why not? Well, for one thing, you need money. Well, not that much. Enough. OK. Let's play a game of what if. Hmm? 
If you had the money, what would you do? I don't have the money. Oh, let's work with me, what if? Go on, if you had the money, what would you do? How much? Oh, I don't know, uh, $20,000. Hmm. That's a lot of money. Yeah, so what would you do? <sighs> this is stupid. It's not. Go on. I want to hear. Maybe go to school. Not be a bartender in a shitty dive bar in this place. Maybe move somewhere. Maybe the big city. Where? I don't know. New York, Los Angeles, or somewhere else. Travel? Sure. What sort of school? I don't know. This is stupid. Why? Because it's never going to happen. Well, it might. It's not stupid to dream. There's a very strange young man who's teaching you. I know what you're doing. And I don't need somebody to save me. Good. But I have no intention of doing so. So what are you really doing here? You know that American tour thing is bullshit. <laughs> I cannot deny it. But I did receive a letter from your grandmother. And I did believe it to be written by a child. So you came all this way for that kid? No, it's more complicated than it sounds. When you get to be my age, you just need to know certain things. It's like, uh, when I die, will I be remembered? Could I have done things better in my life? Should I have done things differently? And you didn't have any answers? I'm a game show host. Divorced. I barely see my son, my grandchildren. Mr. Goodfriend's funeral. Wow, dick moves. <laughs> I met Dennis. It's my housemate. He's changed my ringtone. Yeah. Brian. Seems altogether silly. We're blindfolded to get a cup of coffee. That's a surprise. All right, hold on. Uh, Just stand there. Uh, don't don't move. Don't move. Uh, Blindfold off. Ta-da! <laughs> How about it? What do you think? Well, it's a, it's a theater. Yeah, man. Yeah, after you told me you wanted to do a show, I got this wild idea that I just buy the old theater downtown and you can set up whatever you wanted. Yeah, I, I know it, it looks like a family raccoons have been living and having too many babies here, but you know, we'll get some people in to clean it up, you know, put some extra neon lights in or whatever your Shakespeare business needs. Well, some, uh, some new spotlights will be better. Sure. Whatever you need, man. Whatever you need. I'm touched, Dennis. Truly, I am. I, um, I got a call yesterday from my employers. They need me back. The British government? You really think I'm James Bond, do you? Nah, I'm just messing with you, man. <laughs> it's okay. <clears throat> but you know you can't go, right? Well, I'm afraid I have to. That's why I asked you out for a coffee this morning. I didn't expect this. Wait, so what was all that talk about you trying to figure out your purpose and all that? What about your dream of doing a show in a kick-ass venue like this? You're right. Sorry, Dennis, I let you down. Seems I'm just... too old to change horses. 
when it really comes to it. Yeah, at least you're honest. I'm sorry not to accept your generous gift. What do you do with the place? Yeah, I don't know, maybe a strip club? Yeah. Yeah, there's already a pole there. One there. Hmm. Your mind fascinates me. So that's it. Well, it's been real, Bond. Good luck to you. You too. Hope Tiny Hamster takes over the world. Tiny Hammer. All right. I have an idea. Just stay here. Okay? Okay. Don't move. Keep coming in, keep coming in. Yeah, 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 good, good, good. Okay, all right. What's going on? It's an audience, and they want to see a performance. To be honest, I don't know if they really do, but I paid them each 50 bucks to come here for 30 minutes. What sort of performance? Bro, you've been spinning your wheels on performing Shakespeare for an audience. Here you go. I mean, you've got a theater, an audience, what more do you need? Rehearsal. Nah, you got this, man. You know what they say, mom spaghetti. <sighs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for following me in today. I really appreciate it. We are in for a treat. Today, we witness a freaking genius at work. I'm talking an original Lisa Monet in the making. So without further ado, can we please give a warm welcome to the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Jonathan Robbins! the unyoked humor of your idleness. Yet herein will I imitate the sun, who doth permit the base contagious clouds to smother up his beauty from the world that when he please again to be himself, being wanted, he may be the more wondered at by breaking through the foul and ugly mists of vapors that did seem to strangle him. You here to bribe me into hanging out with you again? I wish. No, I've come to tell you that I'm heading out now. Got it. They need me back. Turns out they really do suffer without me. You're a big deal. Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh... You've got my number, so, uh, do keep in touch, yeah? Let me know how things are going and all that. 
that the voice of an angel on my front lawn? Well, my darling. I have to get back to London. It's been wonderful. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> well, uh, keep watching the show, I guess. <laughs> you know I will. <laughs> OK, then. I'll, uh, I'm away. Goodbye, Mr. Robbins. practices, whatever you do. Never knew so, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I'll keep the world turning. Mm. Well, Dennis. Oh, yes. This has been an unexpected delight. I want to miss you, bro. You'll find yourself in London. You look me up. You know it. Oh, and, uh, if I do ever get around to doing some Shakespeare there, would you both be my very special guests? Front row and center. All right. <laughs> Bye now. I still feel surprisingly judgmental. <laughs> I don't really have anyone else to talk to. I did a bit of Shakespeare in this funny little town. It was before part one. God, you'd have laughed me out of the pub. Or punched some sense into me. It was a strange feeling that people might actually have cared about me. Well, not about what I did, but just maybe about me. Well, you wouldn't have cared if I hadn't become something. You cared because you, because you cared about me. Simple. I know it wasn't your favorite, but, uh, I miss you, my friend. <sighs> Hello. Wait, slow down, slow down. Slow down, yes. Okay. No, oh, no. Just listen. I'll be there first thing, okay? I'm on my way, all right?
They won't give me any answers. <laughs> they just keep running around putting things in her. That boyfriend, the one I saw you with, has he hurt you? Yeah. You know that's not okay. David, it's Jonathan. Um, you're right, David. I've been a terrible friend. Mine heaven, Mr. Robbins. Nice. You're alive. For the moment. You come back all this way just for me. It would be cold. Do you care about her? I can tell. I'd have to keep an eye out when I go. Be okay. Oh, you get the doctor. Jonathan, I'm not going to be okay. You understand? I'm ready, though. Lord, I'm ready. And I know where I'm going. How about you, Jonathan? Do you know where you're going? Well, the best thing to do is to admit it. Jonathan. You remember what you told me out on my lawn? You said you forgot all those small things in life. Well, whatever you do from here, you remember one thing. You focus. 
focus on those small things now and I promise you'll end up changing someone's life for the better. That's fine. Nice job, Paul. It looks good. Ruby! You're here! <laughs> well, you told me to make choices even if they don't work out. I'm very pleased. <laughs> Got myself enrolled in a few online classes. Uh-huh. Nursing school, I'm thinking. But thought I'd do some traveling. Who knows, maybe find a fresh start somewhere else. Sounds like a very good decision. So, this is England, huh? Yeah, well, a pavement of it. Okay. Pretty though, isn't it? Beautiful. Beautiful. And the Henry O'Connor Theater? Yeah, I thought I'd, uh, I'd honor the great man in some way. I'm sure they'll laugh me out of town, an old man like me jumping out of his own. 
Uh, who cares if they do? <laughs> In the game show? Oh, they fired me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ripped up the brand new contract and everything. It was defined as a mutual parting of the ways after many years of loyal service. Well, the network did send a very nice box of chocolate. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Best thing that's happened to me. <laughs> Can we talk about the money? If you must. You just didn't need to do that. If a friend with means cannot help a friend in need, then I don't know what the world is coming for. You sound like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> ah, finally. A genius you've read. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Well, thank you. Well, if you think then I helped you, then you're missing the point entirely. You know, I will be forever grateful to you and your grandmother. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have a long-standing lunch appointment in 15 minutes, so... Uh... Oh, that's okay. I mean, I can find something else. Well, I was, uh, I was going to ask if you'd like to join us. Yes, I would like that. <laughs> Very good. Turns out that you're the only one I know in England. That's a good start. Shall we? We shall. Seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth, and then the justice in full round belly of the good king of night. Thrice a year, beautiful cut, full of wise saws and modern instruments. And so he plays his part. The six age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles. Hose and pouch on the hip. His youthful hose, well saved. The world too wide for his shrunken shank. And his big manly voice turning again toward childish treble. Pipes and whistles. Last scene of all. That ends this strange, eventful history. The second childishness and near oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans. Yeah. <laughs>